Millions have been infected and hundreds of thousands have died from coronavirus across the world. It's no time to get cocky, no time to get arrogant. This virus has deceived us every step of the way. Although children are less vulnerable, there are increasing cases of children displaying overlapping symptoms of COVID-19 and Kawasaki-like disease. Kawasaki syndrome is, is a syndrome that's been, been around for a long time. It's a rare condition. It happens. It usually resolves uh, itself, and it is associated with inflammatory processes in the, in the blood vessels. And Children with Kawasaki disease experienced a prolonged fever lasting several days, swollen lymph glands in the neck, and a strawberry tongue. Affected children can also develop rashes, redness in their eyes, lips, mouth, as well on the palms of their hands and soles of their feet. These symptoms are similar to pediatric multisystem inflammatory syndrome, which has been appearing in children who have tested positive for COVID-19. With surfacing research, is there a potential link and what do parents need to know? Pediatric multisystem inflammatory syndrome can be observed in older children, while Kawasaki is mostly diagnosed in children under 5. While both diseases have the similar symptoms, the differences are observations of abdominal pain, nausea, diarrhea, and chest pain. The causes of Kawasaki disease are still unknown. The risk factors are children and people who are of Japanese or Asian descent. Boys are also more likely to develop the disease than girls. It is important to note that the disease is not contagious and having a reoccurrence of the disease is rare. It is believed that some children are genetically predisposed to have an autoimmune response that can be triggered possibly by infections. The correlation is still a mystery. Doctors in Italy published a study documenting numerous cases of pediatric multisystem inflammatory syndrome linked to the coronavirus. 8 out of 10 children they studied with pediatric multisystem inflammatory syndrome had antibodies to COVID-19, indicating that they had been infected. In the past month, they found a 30-fold increased incidence of Kawasaki-like disease. Doctors believe the syndrome may be a post-infection disease where the body's immune system overreacts in the wake of infection, sometimes as late as four to six weeks after exposure to coronavirus. The main complication of ignoring symptoms of Kawasaki disease 10 days to two weeks after they start is damaging of the heart. Inflammation of the coronary arteries can lead to weakening and bulging of the artery wall. Aneurysms increase the risk of blood clots which could lead to a heart attack or cause life-threatening internal bleeding. During the beginning stages, blood and urine tests along with physical examination will be required prior to diagnosis. An electrocardiogram will also be used. Electrodes are attached to the skin to measure the electrical impulses of the heart. An echocardiogram will show how well the heart is working through ultrasound images. Current treatments are an infusion of an immune protein called gamma globulin through a vein which can lower the risk of coronary artery problems. Under the supervision of a doctor, low doses of aspirin can help treat inflammation and reduce fever. If a child is admitted for pediatric multisystem inflammatory syndrome, their primary treatment would be supportive care. Fluids and medication would likely be administered to maintain blood pressure as well as anti-inflammatory medication like steroids or immunoglobulin. Overall, only a few COVID-19 associated cases describes any vessel inflammation similar to Kawasaki disease. In North America, there is still an estimate of 5 to 6,000 annual cases of Kawasaki disease. With the million cases of COVID-19 emerging, there will be some overlap. Current research has only been preliminary and there is no proven link. The hope is that both diseases could end up being better understood and treated. As for now, please follow the safety guidelines and do not be afraid to reach out to hospitals if you believe your child has any of these symptoms. Thank you for watching. Follow along the Clarity Amid the Pandemic podcast series to shed further light on various topics related to and affected by the COVID-19 pandemic.